All right, we're live. From the Indie Week offices in beautiful downtown, chilly Toronto, I'm Cameron Carpenter. Daryl Hers, and it is cold. It is cold. Yeah. No yeah. short chat. It's just been brutal. I feel sorry for all the clubs that have patios that rely on some of that for their business this time of year. And but it's never this time of year, I think. Oh, but come on, it's April, it's April 15th, and I haven't been on a patio yet. Yeah, but never. Not this time. Yes. I watch because <laughs> my pool opens in the back at, on May 2-4 weekend, mm. and it's always too cold, even by May 2-4 weekend. <laughs> so, uh, Normally we play video at the start, but we haven't yet, because so, we're going to talk about the video later. Yeah. Um, we often start by talking about what we did last week. This is weird. We're in the office. There's Dylan in the back. Hey, Dylan. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're not in the boardroom today. We're in the back office. Yes. Uh, so um, let's talk about what we did last week. Last Friday was jam packed. It was. It was. It was a round robin of events all across the city. We started off uh, at the Olay Music uh, Quarterly Music Report, basically, where Gilles Gardard. Uh, it was actually kind of cool because it was simultaneous in New York and Nashville and L.A. Right. Uh, they had a band play acoustically. We'll talk about them later because they played later that night as well. And then just gave a report on what their new artist signings were, what their syncs were, and things like that. It was a really cool little intimate party that was like a great way to spend a Friday afternoon and run into old friends like Andy Curran and Andy Hawk and Frank Davies, who works with Dee Beaujean, uh, Robert Ott, who runs the whole organization, and hear about their exciting new music for... Uh, the second quarter this year, so that was a lot of fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, then we went off to the uh, video release party for the Mono Whales, which is a band that played Indie Week a few times. Um, they are, uh, to me, one of my favorite sort of up and coming bands, which isn't as up and coming anymore. They're this video. Uh, Real love. Real, yeah, Real Love is um, also on Indie 88. They're playing it, and The Edge is playing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if you can, go to the Mono Whales page, like it, share their video, and uh, help push this band through. Yeah, it was kind of a cool idea they had for a party. They got the industry together once again, and they gave everyone a sneak preview of it. There was a back room you could put headphones on and watch it. Then they played it on the big screen, and we had to keep it quiet. And then they finally released the video, I think, on Tuesday. Officially, yeah. yeah. But it's a great video, yeah, and the band just keeps getting better and better, and good luck to the Mono Whales with real love. Yeah, I think this this one will do a lot for them. This mm -hmm. is a, It was a great song, and I thought the video uh, really um, is engaging and interesting, uh, kind of like Strange Things-like. Um, Stranger Things? Stranger Things, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it'll be really cool. It catches the quirkiness of the band, too, because it is a quirky pop band, and it's guys and girls, and they, they have a funky little style, and it really comes across. It looked like they had some budget for this video, so that really helps as well. So Yep. And uh, then we went, and we were sort of club hopping between the two, and uh, we started at Lee's Palace um, and saw Stuck on Planet Earth. Mm -hmm. which was the band at Olay. Right. They played acoustically, and they got on stage and rocked it out a little harder at Lee's Palace. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was a really good crowd for them. Uh, again, another great band, and mm -hmm. uh, wish them well with Olay. And, yes. Uh, should be good. And Olay did a really good job of getting people out early, because there was a headliner later that night, which we'll get to, but got people out to see their band as well, which is what a good management company or record company or publisher will do. They will draw get bodies to your to your gig, and that's a big part of it. So. Exactly. Then we went to the Mod Club. I almost forgot about the Mod Club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the quick stop over at Mod Club, I uh, see an old friend. I actually used to work with Casey. Uh, saw Casey Roberts. Um, to me, one of the best guitarists in the city. This guy is amazing. Uh, he writes all the charts. I think it was like a 12-piece band. Mm -hmm. uh, is insane. Uh, packed as well. It was packed, and it was, yeah, yeah. sort of a like, James Brown prince size band. It was huge, but... yeah. It was great to see it that busy on a Friday night. And yeah, the guy can play guitar. <laughs> guy can play, man. He, yeah. Anytime you can see Casey Roberts, do mm -hmm. it. Do it. Uh, and then we went back to Lee's Palace and saw really good friends, Sumo Psycho. Yes. Just back from their UK tour, uh, ready for their US tour. 
Uh, this is a band that do just doesn't stop working. We love these guys, uh, Sumo Psycho. They did a great job. They had a lot of fun. What I really liked was they had these little cool step up ramps. I don't know what you'd call them. They almost look like steps, like if you're changing a light bulb, but they were cooler than that. Yeah. That, you know, between Matt and, and Sky, they'd be jumping off and on them, and it sort of elevated them above the crowd, even though Lee's has a huge stage. But it was cool. Like, it was like a little prop that was so simple. That's it. But effective. You just can't, you can't use it all night, but when you use it, it becomes effective if you use it in bits and pieces and stuff, so. Yeah, uh, exactly. A little platform kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's, those are the things, and this is what Sumo Psycho's great at, is right off the bat, it makes the show different and makes the band's perception that they're just automatically better than the rest on stage that night. Mm -hmm. Like, they were more pro or more developed. Um, they also had screens uh, in front of their amps uh, with their name on mm -hmm. it. Uh, so you couldn't, like, every photo taken is going to have the word Sumo Cycle in it. Yep. Uh, anyone walking in, you'd know exactly who is uh, playing. Yep. Uh, there's many times I go to a bar and the band doesn't even announce who they are. Exactly. And every like, three songs, every three songs say who you are on stage. That's right. In fact, I tweeted about this uh, a week ago when I was out watching a band. And they're like, oh, follow us on socials. Follow who? And I'm like, who? I don't even know who you are. But I tweeted about this band that I didn't know. Um, asked me to tweet about them, but I was tweeting about this band I didn't know. Yeah. So I didn't help them in any way. So. And it was nice to see our friends from Hop City there sampling as well that night, which was cool. Yes. And the other thing that Sumo Psycho does really well, and you know, it's another tip for bands, is they were at the merch table before the show. And after. Like and immediately I wasn't after. there after the show, yeah, yeah. so I was going to ask you if they were there, knowing the answer would be yes. But like, they were there before they went on stage as well. Yeah. So you could engage, and you were going to stick around and, and meet the band. And, they sell yeah. merch. Yeah. You know? Shout out to uh, a couple comments. Mike Stroud uh, also agrees. Casey is a monster guitar player. And Costa in Montreal. Nice. Shout out to you guys. Um, yeah, and you went to a thing on I went Monday or Tuesday? Oh, actually, I went on, on Saturday night oh, too. Right. I went down to Castro's Lounge, which is my favorite bar on the beach. It's a great 40 seat intimate. <laughs> Bar that a lot of our great bands who have played Indie Week, like Jerry Legere, Andrew Ramela, like Sybil Ray. Uh, my friend Blair Packham was there. It was a horrible night. It was just brutal on Saturday night. There was an ice storm in right. Toronto. Thought it might get canceled. Trudged on down so I wanted to see Blair. And it was a great show. He really interacted with the audience. As he said, like everyone who is here tonight has been to my house because <laughs> it's such a <laughs> small room right. and it was such a crappy night. But um, it was good to see him. So, yeah. And happy birthday on Monday, Blair. <laughs> nice. That's not a surprise. <laughs> then, on, yeah, Tuesday night, um, Canada Music Live did a little thing at the Garrison in the afternoon uh, with Aaron Benjamin and Lisa's a bit new and who spoke uh, Royal Wood, right. just about the vision of where we're going in Ontario for live music and what the government can do for us. The minister, for, the provincial minister, spoke as well. So it was interesting to see. Very, very busy there, actually. Yeah. A lot of the industry was out. A lot of the indie industry was there. Shane Carter, the president of Sony, was there, which is great to see the majors were there as well. Right. And, you know, the vision basically here, we can, we can put this in a nutshell. Here's the vision. Go see bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go see bands, buy tickets, buy yeah. booze. Support the, support. support the artists, support the venues, and everything will be fine. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty simple stuff. Uh... Yeah, and uh, it just uh, before we talk about shows coming up for this week, um, talking about uh, we've got a band from Brazil coming up for the whole month of May called Trampa, mm -hmm. and they're playing Canadian Music Week, and I believe it's May 9th, 9 p.m. at the Bovine. Uh, if you've seen them, they're, you know they're great. Uh, they're coming back, and they've got new music, new surprises, um, and I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> Okay. Soon. I actually just got off the phone with uh, Andre, the singer of Trampa, and uh, there's some really cool stuff coming up. Um, if you are playing CMW as well, and you're one of our Indie Week alumni or whatever, let us know when and where you're playing. We're compiling a list right now. We're going to try to go out and see everyone and say hi. And if you've applied this year and haven't played before, but are playing CMW, let us know when your set time is and where you are as well, so we can take a look at you live. Right. And also, the other thing that we uh, usually say is, if you're watching even right now, a good thing to do is just put a link, like just comment 
mm -hmm. band you are and put a link so that other people while watching this can interact with your page yeah and also like theirs and share theirs and stuff like that mm -hmm. so community building right share your new video as well yeah <laughs> Just put it in the comments below yeah uh, and then the other thing is, if you're interested in playing Indie Week, we've got two applications open. One is for Canada, one's for UK. Canada.indieweek.com slash apply is for the Canada uh, Festival, which is in November. And that's open to any band from anywhere in the world. Whereas UK is in October, it's in Manchester. And the website is uk.indieweek.com slash apply. And that is for UK and European artists only. Mm -hmm. So there you go. We're doing lots of listening right now. Yes. A lot of listening. Just lots of applications to go through. I've and listened. great applications. Yes. Sure. Yes. I, I've listened to over 200. I know you've listened to probably more. Yeah. Um, and I just actually listened to some of the UK applications. There's lots of great stuff there. Um, We've got applications from literally every corner of the earth right now. Yeah. A couple new countries are coming in this year, and it's fantastic. Kiev. So. I've seen Kiev in there, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to note is um, we've got the, like I said, the applications open, but uh, try to follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well because we're posting stuff there. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sundays, they're watching from Denmark. Nice. Yes. They're in our uh, playlist this week, I believe. Or coming up. Yeah. Oh, maybe they're I saw in this a post. week. Yeah. I saw the post. <laughs> okay. And they liked it and shared it. Excellent. So yeah, if we put you on our on our playlist, share it and like it as well, and have a listen because if you're on it, you're you know, all the bands are great that we've been putting on our playlists and have applied from around the world. So yeah, have right. a listen. And actually, we just got a question: uh, Artists from Canada able to apply to Week UK this year? No. No. Nope. This year it's UK and Europe only. So the thing to do is come to Canada's showcase there, and you never know, you might be able to get to go to UK through that for next year. Yeah. So Win your way to the UK. We're working <laughs> on stuff. Yes. <laughs> um, so then we're going to talk about this week's stuff. Starting with tonight. Tonight. Uh, tonight we're at the Ballroom Bowl. Uh, this is at the corner of Richmond and John. Uh, it's free cover, free entry, and we've got four bands. Uh, I'll let you tell about the bands. We like have. Tonight, well, four bands free. Yes. Uh, Eric Mayer, Four Keeps, The Farewell Suburb, and from ha uh, Hamilton, The Bandicoots. Right. So, first band's on at 10, and uh, like I said, it's a free show, so come on down and support independent music, plus uh, other people in the industry show up. In fact, Jennifer just mentioned she can hardly wait, so she'll be there. And it's a 7 o'clock so, start for the Leaf game, so it'll be over by 10. So. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, look at that. Costa, brand new music video being premiered on Spill Mag next Thursday for Vinyl Hero. Ah. Yes. Spill Magazine. And we'll be one talking the, about that. One of the magazines you should be reading. You should all be reading different blogs and magazines as well, but we digress for a second. Yes. Uh, other things happening. Cancer Bats are Friday and Saturday at uh, Lee's Please Palace. Go. That'll be craziness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It'll be heavy. Yes. <laughs> Uh, also, Friday's Planet Smashers at the Horseshoe. This is like uh, 420 stuff, I believe. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> it's that time of year. 420, right? Yeah. It means nothing to me. Sorry, kids. Yeah. Uh, Saturday as well is uh, Record Store Day. Yeah. Good luck to my friend Ryan Kerr, Record Store Day Canada. I know there's some really cool... You know, even the majors get involved. I saw something that Warner's doing today, like a great colored vinyl 7-inch Zeppelin nice. single. And Zeppelin never put out singles. I think Immigrant Song was the only 7-inch they ever pressed, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah? Someone, some tourist will come in and say it was a whole lot of love or whatever. But I think they only put out one 7-inch because they never wanted to be a singles band. Real, well, yeah. That you know what? It works. It their totally album, works. Their albums are awesome, and you got to listen to them front yeah. to back. Yeah, and there's some new Bowie stuff, and there's lots of great Canadian stuff coming out on Record Store Day. So that's Saturday. Go, you know, go pick up a record. It's a piece of art as well, even if you don't have a turntable. Right. It's like the old days. You can pick something up and read it, and read the <laughs> liner notes. <laughs> I noticed that Ian from Double Experience just tuned in. Thanks. Shout out to Ian. Uh, they're going to be playing at CMW this year. Cool. Thursday at the hideout, 2 a.m., I believe, is their spot. 
Uh, then there's a special event Sunday night at the Horseshoe starting at 8 o'clock. It's open to the public. It's uh, the Heartbroken are hosting a tribute to my friend Stuart Jolliffe. Yes, that's uh, going to be a Who, hard night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stuart was a huge impact in the industry, East Coast. Um, well respected all across Canada. Yeah, he brought the Junos to Halifax. He worked for Habit Habitat for Humanity. He just moved to Toronto about a year and a half ago to take over the Western Harbor Castle. So many East Coast bands owe Stuart Jolliffe yeah. um, not a favor, but just a thank you for what he did for the East Coast music scene in Canada. When I had bands working on the road, if I needed a deal at Delta Hotels, he was always there. He put the bands up at a special rate. Wonderful man. We lost him suddenly last week, and yeah. Well, we'll pay respects on Sunday. Yeah, and, and Saturday as well. I have to go to the yeah. celebration of life up in Peterborough. But I'm looking forward to seeing some of my East Coast friends, having a laugh, having a tear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some music news. <laughs> This is uh, some stuff I've been seeing a lot on Twitter, uh, Coachella's going on, and a uh, big thing that was announced was uh, all about Beyonce. Beyonce, yeah. it was like, she's bigger than Coachella. She's bigger than God. Like, they, they started <laughs> renaming Coachella after her, uh, and she brought up the Destiny's Child reunion on stage, everybody went crazy mm -hmm. on social, uh, pretty nuts. But then topping Beyonce, it's Cardi B. Cardi B <laughs> just broke Beyonce's uh, Guinness Book World Records. Two of them. Cardi B's broken three records recently. Yeah. Uh, basically, she's charting all over the place. Online charts. She's like at number. I wrote the, We wrote this down. We look at it. It's, she's at number three, number four, number eight, number ten. Like. And the other Insane. artists on that chart are just The Weeknd and Drake. That's it. Three artists yeah. in the top ten. <laughs> That's the Hits Daily Double streaming and airplay chart and stuff. It's so weird, though, when you talk about charts nowadays. Because they're streaming, they're downloads, they're sales, they're airplay, they're whatever. Where back in the day, it used to be, hey, top 100 on Billboard charts. What sold? Pink Floyd was on it for five and a half years or whatever. Yeah. Those days are gone. Before SoundScan, when you know, what, or the ra radio chart was the radio chart. It was AC. Yeah. It was country. It was rock. That was it. But yeah, now it's 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 streaming, right? Like online is and a combinations big thing. of you know streaming and downloads and right. Yeah. You know, Spotify is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So you know, but it's interesting. Cardi B, man, out of nowhere, and and this is the thing is like. Um, you know, it's an industry where you never know, and also sometimes it's pretty uh, planned out. And I yeah. think there's a lot of people behind this artist and making lot, sure that's successful. A lot of people writing beats, a lot of people writing songs, a lot of people co-producing, choreographers, you name it. But. Right. But, you know, what? I'll talk about that in the last part, I guess. Okay. Well, uh, uh, and you usually have a book? I have a book. Yeah, let's go the exact opposite of what we were just talking about. <laughs> Grumpy old rock star Rick Wakeman. It is a really funny book. God love Rick Wakeman. Here's a guy, one of the greatest keyboard players of all time, who in the early 70s had to make a decision. If you've ever heard the song Changes by David Bowie, that's him playing piano. He was brought in to do the session work. and right. Great piano player. Bowie asked him to be in Spiders of Mars at the same time John Anderson said I've got this band called Yes would you like to be in it like make a decision <laughs> right so he went the yes way but either way he's, he would have been good yeah but it, it's a funny book brilliant musician lots of laughs in it and right very cool um, and also thanks again Costa Costa's commenting again and Ian put up their double experience set time nice just note that's Thursday at the hideout, because you just said hideout two a.m. Oh, so okay. Thursday. <laughs> so it's always weird, like like when you're playing two a.m. at a festival. So it's like you're playing November eleventh at Indie Week at two a.m. It's actually that's November twelfth, and like yeah. how do you put it so you're getting the word out that it's the right time and date? And you have to be, you know. It's weird on digital too. Yeah, because because uh, it. Technically, it's the other day, and it'll say that on digital, too. But basically, we say if you're playing November 11th, if you're playing at 2 in the morning, it's basically you'd be listed as a November 11th gig. Yeah, so it's the next day. Yeah. But, um, yeah, a couple things. I always try to leave with some advice and stuff for bands to take. 
So just out of the, some of the conversations, here's the thing is promotion is one of the things I find artists have the hardest time about talking about themselves and telling everybody about their shows and like they, they I find often they're worried about bothering people. Bother people. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> Think of marketing. How many times do you hear about the Avengers being released next Friday? If it is next Friday, I think. But you hear about the Avengers a year and a half, two years before. You hear about they'll release a poster with a date. And the poster is just a black poster with the Avengers on it. Hmm. And it'll say something like, Avengers coming out 2020. Date to be announced. And then leading up to it, they'll say, who's the director? And then who's writing the script? And then who's the star? Is this star returning or not? Mm -hmm. They'll release a behind the scenes photo. They'll release a little trailer clip. They'll, like it's just so much work leading up to the actual event. And I just find uh, artists tend to have a hard time talking about themselves. And unfortunately we are in the sales business. You gotta sell it. And uh, there's a whole thing like you could do, say if you have a show coming up, try to make sure you have enough lead up time to promote it properly or a CD release and start doing an announcement that CD's coming out fall 2018. Then a month or two later, say the date it's coming out. Then a week later, say where the CD release party is. Then release some artwork, then release a video teaser. Then say that tickets are going to go on sale in a week. Don't just put them on sale. Then have pre-sale tickets and have a lyric video and then a teaser video of the video and all this stuff just leads into hype. And that's part of how you can build momentum around it. And you can actually template it, which means you do that for every single show, every single release, and it actually becomes easier because you have a system in place to promote it. And talk about yourself a lot. And so, I was gonna say, go and if you can't have a logo that's constant. Yes. You like you're talking Branding. about the movie. Yeah, well, you're talking about the movie thing. Like all you need to show is the bat light and you could put 2022 on it and you knew you know that a Batman movie is coming out. Yeah. If I put N I N 2020, it's like, "Ooh, new Nine Inch Nails coming out." Yeah. Like the Monowales have a great new logo. Yeah. And they're consistently using it on their stickers and on, on their t-shirts and stuff. So get a logo and keep using the same one. Don't change your fonts, don't change your colors. Yes, that's not <laughs> where to be creative. Mhm. Mm Come up with it and live with it. Yeah. And that's it. Create your brand. And it's a way where people get to know about you. Or often I've, when I've worked with bands and we, like, they'd be handing out flyers and stuff, people start being like, I've seen this somewhere. Mm. And that's the first part is getting into their subconscious where they've seen it. They might not know it, but that's how they educate. And later they'll know it because they it just bombard them with it nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, going back to Avengers, you'll see... They'll take over, say, a web, like a blog or something where they've got the ad banner at the top, they've got the showcase image, they've got the sidebar, they've got the background of the website, like, you can't miss it. But then you're on the street, you see, oh, there's their billboard, there's their bus shelter, there's a poster. Then you, possibly, in some cases at McDonald's or whatever, there's the cup and right. there's the other stuff. And you just can't escape it so that you know it's happening, mm -hmm. period. You know, and, and that's how a lot of these uh, shows become blockbusters. Like the Black Panther, you knew about the Black Panthers coming out like way before it's coming out and yeah. heard about it and all this hype. And uh, it just blew everything away as far as the box office goes. So, so when we're talking about bands like this Cardi B and Beyonce, they're hype machines. And, and bands have to also think of that they have to sell their music, they have to sell their tickets. And speaking of the Black Panther, how about Kendrick Lamar getting the Pulitzer Prize, which is unbelievable, did a lot of the music for uh, yeah. the Black Panther, and that's really cool. But. Nice. Yeah. So so hopefully that, that helps give some knowledge, you know, like we want to help everybody, but, but that's the thing, you just gotta talk about it. And then therefore, if you want to apply to Indie Week, see, here's the plug. Nice. Yes, uh, <laughs> canada.indieweek.com slash apply is for the Canada uh, festival it's in November and all artists are invited to apply whereas the uh, UK it's uk.indieweek.com slash apply and that's for UK and European artists only yeah so see plug 
Thank you to our sponsors, Jack Daniels and Hop City, Slate Music. Thanks for the funding support from OMDC and Factor. Indie Week would not be able to do this without them. Mm -hmm. So sponsors are a huge part of what we do. We thank them greatly. And if you want to keep this discussion going in person, come by the Ballroom Bowl tonight. <laughs> yes. And comment below. Look, throw up your links, throw up your websites, put posters throw up your horns. all below in the comments. So there you are. Hopefully we'll see you tonight at the Ballroom. And thanks for watching the Weekly Music Report. See Cheers. Ya.